Good afternoon, everyone. Good morning, depending on where you are. My name is Aisa Tu, and I'm a lawyer at Hogan Novels. And uh, today we have um, a panel, a session on data protection and digital uh, transformation in Africa. I've got Mamadou saying he's trying to connect, sorry. So um, our guest today is Mr. Olufemi Daniel, and he works at the Nigerian um, ICT regulator, uh, re regulating organization called NITDA, and uh, he's in charge of compliance, amongst other things. He's also been involved in the drafting of the data protection regulation. Uh, he got involved in the drafting of the data protection bill. So uh, any questions about uh, Nigerian law and data protection, he will be your man. Um, and uh, we have Lavin, who's a consultant at Hogan Lovells and uh, has done uh, many other great things in the area of um, finance, of uh, cryptocurrencies, of blockchain, data and payments. So it's really uh, FinTech that he specialized in. He has advised, uh, G GDF, which is the global, global digital finance on um, the drafting of their security token code of conduct. And he is also advised the European Parliament and he has advised on a uh, number of files such as fintech, virtual currencies, uh, blockchain, et cetera, et cetera. So um, Lavan today will be asking questions to Olufemi and Mamadou when he arrives. Um, hopefully we'll be here on uh, what their countries have done on data protection and how Africa is planning to um, harmonize data protection laws. Olufemi, so I have a question for you. Um, what is the um, priority regarding uh, data protection laws in your country? What do you find um, is the most important in Nigeria? Thank you very much, Aisha, too, and thanks, uh, audience. Well, um, first of I the, the first thing I need to point out is that Nigeria started late in terms of the drafting and um, you know, publication of a national law on data privacy and protection. Um, before, before 2019, we had a couple of sectoral interventions almost like the American style of um, sector-based regulation, but as it were, it wasn't going to be able to meet the needs of the nation. So our priority and the philosophy behind our implementation is that basically three to four issues. Number one is there is a right to privacy that is enshrined in our constitution, section 37 of our constitution. Uh, which needs to be activated and protected actively. That is one of the basic, that is one of the foundations of the data protection and the philosophies. Then also we are very conscious of the fact that Nigeria has a very active young population, um, uh, people who are, who do not want to be held bound by the by boundaries of territory and otherwise. So we have a lot of young people who do a lot of bring up a lot of innovative solutions. And the best way we could help them and help ourselves is to ensure that their businesses are continuously globally competitive. So one of the core underpinnings of the Nigerian data protection regulation and other things Nigeria is doing is to ensure that Nigerian businesses remain competitive globally because we believe that we have young people and people who can actually compete globally, but we need the right laws that fits the temperament of, of Nigeria and the, the, the possibilities that um, we think um, our people can actually achieve. So basically it's to is privacy, to protect privacy. Number two is to ensure that we remain globally competitive in terms of business opportunities and otherwise. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Mr. Nyan. Good afternoon. So, uh, so we have Mamadou Nyan that had the issues connecting, as you can see, but he's here now. So Mamadou Nyan is the head of legal for uh, the Senegalese Data Protection Authority called the Data Protection Commission or Commission uh, sur la protection des données à caractère personnel in Dakar. 
Uh, he's also a professor at University Gaston Berger in Saint Louis in Senegal, and uh, he will be answering some questions as well on data protection and. Uh, um, to what extent is uh, data protection important for the development of your country, Senegal? Thank you, Mrs. Silla. Good, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a very interesting question for Senegal. It's very, very important for the development because uh, the data protection uh, issues are uh, very, very important. And basically, in uh, when it comes to analyze the data protection impact in our economy, we have uh, too many fields like the protection of privacy and uh, personal data of individuals. It's uh, one of our main concern. The second concern is the business. If you want to implement your business in a, a small or big business in Senegal, uh, compliance with uh, data protection rules and law, it's a big opportunity to build a strong trust between the consumer and the business and the administration. And uh, that's why it's very important to have strong rules, to have clear rules, to assume certainty when it comes to legal, legal matters. And uh, compliance with data protection is very important for electronic transaction. And, uh, you, and you, notice, you can notice it in the context of COVID-19. We need uh, more electronic transaction, more interaction between countries, but in the cyberspace. And data protection is one of the most important things to take care about when you want to we well, want to invest in uh, Africa and countries like Senegal right now. And uh, compliance is uh, one of the one of the scope of uh, due, intel, due diligence in international uh, tender process. And it's also a marketing tool that can uh, enhance uh, trust between uh, the market, the individuals the social uh, social uh, communities and the administration or states and uh, for for one of one more uh, aspect of the question it is uh, very important to give to the people an uh, adequate protection and uh, and we want to provide them an, uh, a strong framework legal and uh, regulatory from work to yes to make it happen thank that's you very good. much that's, uh, that's quite so that's quite interesting what, what you both said there because olafemi it seems that from the nigerian perspective um what what the what the focus is on here or one of the focuses on here is looking at how nigerian businesses can uh can go on to the global scale um, and what Mamadou is saying from the Senegalese perspective is kind of creating a, uh, a, uh, a, a, a almost a form of culture that's uh, embedded into the community um, in Senegal. So what that leads me to ask, or in, of interest to ask, uh, ask you both here is, as we've seen, even in this sh uh, short conversation already, the aspects of data protection are quite wide ranging um, and trying to address them all in one go can be quite overwhelming. It's a, it's a huge undertaking. Um, what, and, and actually even more so when you've got limited budgets from a regulatory authority. So I guess the question, I, I, and I want to ask you first, uh, Mamadou, and then I'll ask you, uh, Olafemi, um, but what are your, what are your key priorities? How did you come to to choose them as the key key priorities, and and what have you seen since implementation? Uh, thanks, Levan. As you say, we have limited budget, and we and uh, it's it's very important to choose the best priorities for us to make uh, and to undertake uh, the this. One of our major priorities is to build a strong culture of protection, data, and uh, privacy. And uh, we have an, we are we are working right now with the Minister of Education, high high education education in general, in a program that will uh, 
that we allow people, scholars, to be very, very aware of their their rights, digital rights, and the program concern three million, over three million persons, and uh, it's uh, in, in partnership with Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health, Higher Education, Ministry of Public Health, and uh, the Data Protection uh, Commission. Uh, another part is uh, the data controller. We have a program to help them to get compliance from work. And uh, in that uh, case, we are promoting some uh, soft law tools like uh, template, privacy policies, templates like uh, guidelines if they want to transfer data between uh, Senegal and other countries, etc. And simplify uh, industry-specific data product processing for, for example, banking and uh, electronic transaction insurance companies to make them, uh, to facilitate their business. Excellent. Uh, that's interesting. And and what about uh, uh, Olufemi? What about uh, from the Nigerian perspective? Yes, thank you so much. Um, well, Nigeria's focus is to ease, um, to, to promote ease of doing business. So our desire, our strategy and our goal is to ensure, number one, that we have businesses who can, com who can, you know, in a digital economy, the, the boundaries are, are blurred substantially. So we want to ensure that our businesses are able to tap into opportunities both within and outside Nigeria. And one of the things, so the strategy is, number one, we are doing innovating compliance, as it were. So we, we, we have licensed 70 organizations who are expected to, I mean, these are professional organizations, some of the big four auditing firms, the big four auditing firms in the world are on that list. We have law firms, we have um, auditors and all that. 70 of them who provide data protection as a service, in com data protection compliance as a service to these um, organizations. And in the last 15 months, one of the, some of the things with some of the numbers are actually becoming, uh, I mean, it's validating what we are trying to do. Number one, we the sector, uh, the fi audit filings, because we ran a survey recently, and we realized that over $4 million have been made from that, you know, miniature sector within the last um, um, 15, less than 15 months, because audit filings started around, uh, around October. And 445 entities across 28 sectors, have actually applied. 28% of those are in the financial sector because we have a financial sector active within Nigeria and outside of Nigeria. So the compliance rate in that sector is very high, but we have in the fast moving uh, consumer goods, agriculture, education, health, and all that. So our focus right now is to help data controllers, you know, scale up their compliance. And of course, we are we are making we are doing a lot of awareness. And of course, things a program like this is very good because from some of the things Nian and Mamudu is saying, we can also learn from that to look at how to make it percolate into our educational system. But for now, we want to ensure that the controllers are ready because Nigerians are, can be you know can be you know litigious when it comes to issues like this, and we don't want a situation where the knowledge goes before the compliance. So we want the compliance to be heightened. And then um, we are also, you know, sensitizing our people. Like in Africa, we had the only data privacy week in January. We had one week of orient orientating the populace about privacy issues. So we are trying to do both at the same time. But for us, our priority is to ensure that the data controllers and processors are, you know, are helped to, you know, to attain compliance in a very That's, that's excellent. Uh, the, you've got the uh, from both ends there. But I, I'm really interested in that public-private partnership that you've got there with the uh, um, uh, the prof uh, data protection being provided as a uh, as a uh, professional service as well. That's that's really interesting. One of the things that to kind of uh, to touch on there and actually kind of going uh, sorry something is just 
come up on my screen. Can you can you still hear me? I can. Yes. Okay. Cool. Sure um, uh, in any case, uh, one of the things that Olafemi you uh, you had said um, is the the idea of Nigerian companies um, being able to compete on a global scale. So that what you're looking at is both from an internal Nigerian perspective as well as uh, looking externally. Um, and that actually, I think, it leads quite nicely onto a, a, a question uh, which I have for both uh, both you and Mamadou, who I think may have uh, dropped off. But if we if we look at data sharing and data standards, if we if we look towards, for example, the European Union creating the GDPR, these are harmonised standards across all of Europe, um, and then it allows there to be a kind of uh, uh, the ease of doing um, doing business across all of the uh, all of the jurisdictions, creating this network, creating this kind of the standard that everyone adheres to, um, and of course for, it's slightly different uh, from the the setup of the European Union in comparison to the African Union. The European Union, um, the Commission has the the powers to originate legislation. Uh, and I understand that that's uh, different to how things are done with the African Union, but um, I'd be interested to hear more uh, more from you both. And, and first, Mamadou, if if he's still on, uh, if not, then uh, then we'll go straight to you, Olafemi. So what's quite interesting here is that you both wear two uh, multiple hats. Um, so Mamadou, I know he sits on the African Network of Data Protection Authorities, and Olafemi, you. Um, you sit on uh, the APRIDA, which is a working group set specifically to address the harmonization issues uh, across, uh, on data protection across the African Union. Um, if we haven't got Mamadou, then we'll go straight to you, Olafemi. Um, what is it that, um, uh, that you've been seeing in the working group? What are the kind of key issues that you've been addressing? Lavan? Yeah. Yes. So you're, you're breaking off a little bit. I think I got the sense of the question um, on uh, about what the African Union is doing as regards um, data harmonization and in comparison. The, uh, I must first state that the PREDA project, which is the policy and regulatory initiative for digital Africa, um, is actually being supported by the European Union Commission. And the European Union Commission is providing technical and um, let me use the word loosely mentorship, you know, partnership for the African Union Commission because um, for both continents, uh, um, the priorities have not always been the same as it were. And um, the maturation of the data protection in Europe is, you know, has decades of history behind it and uh, case laws behind it. So, so definitely there's a lot to be learned from the European model, which we, we, um, which we think is good for Africa, but definitely we need to domesticate some of the issues. So what we're doing for now is to harmonize the African Union, the uh, African laws. Now, what is the purpose? Is not harmonization for harmonization's sake. What is the purpose of harmonizing? We have a market of 1.3 billion people in Africa, and um, Europe has lesser. But if we have a single digital economy market, we stand a very great chance to be number one, look beholden to foreign investors. So investors would not have to look at 52 countries to know what are you doing in Nigeria, what are you doing in Senegal, what are you doing in Cote d'Ivoire. You are looking at Africa as a single digital market and that helps you to be able to make a decision in a streamlined manner. So one of the things we are doing, we, are, we have actually set up the working group, which um, I'm glad uh, Mamadou is also an active member of. What we have done is to uh, streamline the indicators. We have agreed on certain indicators to for harmonization. Um, uh, various issues such as cross-border transfer, um, data protection authorities, and some other issues that have been streamlined. And currently, we have moved ahead to test that framework in five countries in Africa. After that, it would now be done across board. Now, but the point I want us to understand is that 
Africa and Europe cannot be compared um, uh, uh, immediately on the same scale. But one of the things we are trying to do is to ensure that the, the commonalities are extracted and agreed upon so that while we are developing at, a, uh, at our pace, it's also important that the things that are critical and fundamental are agreed upon so any investor can you know come into a, have an, a basic understanding of what we're trying to achieve and i think um, it's a worthy project and we are making good progress and in, in, the, in the last few months we've made a lot of progress in that regard thank you thank you very much for um we are going to need to conclude and maybe the last question I will ask and really if you could answer in like two or three sentences is what is next in your country? So Mamadou, what is happening in Senegal? How is data protection evolving? And uh, then next, next to you, Lufemi. Uh, yes, thanks. We have dropped the bill to change our law and to maintain a high level of protection according to the GDPR rules and principles. And uh, it is uh, now in process, in progress. Uh, and we hope that uh, in 2021, we we'll have a new bill and a uh, very, and very good one. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah, we, we have made a lot of progress in the last 15 months. We have um, one of the few African countries that issued a fine against an, a government organization, the Lagos Internal Revenue Service. Um, we, are, we, we have created 2,868 2, jobs from data protection as an industry. But um, we still need the law and I mean an act of the National Assembly. We are or currently uh, the bill is, has gone through the second reading. And we are hoping before the end of the year, that is the target that we have within Nigeria and uh, with our foreign partners to ensure that we have an act that creates a data protection commission. However, that has not limited what we are trying to do. We are making progress and we can always continue learning from, from, from events like this. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much for uh, taking part in this talk. And uh, if anyone uh, that's listening to us has any questions, feel free to send us questions in the chat or, or you have our details as well if you click on our profiles. So thank you very much, everyone.